Hello, everyone. Bonjour, tout le monde. <laughs> that was not very convincing. Yes, welcome to Wine and Real Estate. So, yeah, no guest tonight. Who's the guest? You're the guest and I'm... Yes, we're the guests. Well, we've been we haven't uh, just done an update lately of just what's been going on at FL Homes Corp. Um, so just drinking wine tonight and chatting with each other about real estate, which is what we always do. Chin chin. Now we do talk about other things. Yes, what sometimes. else? Sometimes <laughs> <laughs> furniture and budgets and all um, around real estate. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, not yeah, yeah. Furniture, you're right. Clothing. Let's talk about clothing. <laughs> <laughs> No, but tonight we're talking about just a few things that we've been working on lately. So um, uh, with our current real estate, and then we have a, a new, a few new acquisitions. I can't even speak well tonight. I should drink some more wine. Yes. And also uh, our soft launch, I guess, of our property management company. Yes. So we're, as many of you know, we're investing in uh, New Brunswick more specifically Moncton. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have, specifically yeah, Moncton. very specifically. <laughs> we keep getting asked, are you investing in St. John, New Brunswick or other towns? But yeah, nope. Or... Yeah, other Fredericton, anywhere else. <laughs> nope, just Moncton, that's it. There's there's tons there, it's crazy. Lots, lots and lots. And it's about the size of Orleans where we live, Orléans. So uh, a bit bigger. Yeah, a little bit. A little, a little bit, bit bigger. We like to always just do pockets where we just are become kind of, expert at yeah. that area so yeah so we've gotten to really know the area very well and we like we know eastern ontario very well that's another area that we like to invest in and yes. then we are branching out into other areas like um we're going to be closing soon on our first usa property yes yeah detroit michigan so we're really excited and mm -hmm. we can't wait to, to have the keys we did get the pictures so we'll have to share that with you soon some nice before and after and it's almost a rebuild, like that house that we got was abandoned for years. Uh, I think there were almost trees growing in it. So. Yes, what an amazing, amazing pod project. I'm, oh my an amazing project. Yes. <laughs> an amazing project. It really did come a long way. Uh, I mean, it really was like almost like one of those HGTV yeah. horror stories where you start off with like this terrible place and almost moldy. have to like rip everything out except for the studs and even probably some of those. <laughs> yeah, even the brick, they had to redo uh, the brick on the one side and doing, they're doing something very different. So they're replacing a brick wall with brick and then putting this kind of nice looking siding on top. So it's gonna be, I wonder like what getting color. Getting veneers on your teeth. <laughs> yeah, that's it, there you go. <laughs> so yeah, but it's insulation as well. So soundproofing and there's some sort of insulation in brick, so. Yeah, and we're actually really excited about this one because Detroit is actually a city that um, was doing very poorly and is actually kind of rebuilding itself. And it's, there's amazing things happening in Detroit, and I think it's a great place to start yeah. investing. I can't wait to go and see it. So maybe at some point we'll get, well, I have my I passport. Like 10 years when COVID's over. <laughs> <laughs> wow, nice, 10 years, wow. Well, in 10 or 20 years, when it's over, we will yes. go and visit. <laughs> there you go. Or when the next one, or who knows. But. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So if you guys want to have a guest on next week and you don't want to hear us ramble, no. <laughs> I'm just Send kidding. us some suggestions. No, but but. If, you, if anyone has questions about real estate, real estate investing, or areas, um, they can just put it in the comments if they like, and we're going to keep yeah. on talking about what we had already planned on. So another thing that you guys can actually see in the, the ticker that is going across the screen is that Francois has been now coaching for a little while. Yeah, so it's really cool. I, I've been getting people calling me and asking me, uh, would you help me grow my real estate portfolio? How did you get started? How did you quit your job? Um, yeah, and don't quit your job. <laughs> no, I can work out, but you need a solid plan. So mm -hmm. obviously you can't just, well, you could wing it, but you'll get, <laughs> you might have some consequences. So different things, how, where to invest, how do I analyze a market? Now, how do I use other people's money? So OPM, you hear that a lot. So how do you invest with other people, uh, business partners? Uh, there's so many things you can do. Mm -hmm. And it, there's tons of money out there, especially right now. People at home, I know people have bought swimming pools and boats, but they're in back order. So people are bored and have money to invest. And, <laughs> yeah, and I mean, the stock market has been doing well now, but it hasn't always been that good. And some people have registered funds or they just see like all the excitement 
in the real estate market and they want to get involved. So I help people one on one. I tailor a program to suit your needs and your situation because maybe you like your job and yeah. you don't want to quit like I did. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, and there's also we also have strategies that we use to actually purchase properties for less than um, if you can actually believe it in this market, less than list price. Yeah, um, it doesn't work on all kinds of properties and, and anything and everywhere. But there are uh, certain niches and certain ways where you can get that kind of little yeah. little gem uh, for less than the asking price, which is um, interesting as well. Um, and then another thing that we had said we were going to talk about was our new property management company that we actually have in Moncton. It's called FL Rental Properties, and we're very excited about it because, um, well, doing real estate investing from a distance is really hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> make it we make it sound easy sometimes, but it's it's yeah, not. So it's, we've had it's a lot tough. of challenges and and I think that that's gonna be the case in any time. I mean we we've gone through COVID, uh two um property management companies in Moncton. Uh we were losing actually money Vacancy. because because of that. And we were starting to think that Moncton maybe wasn't such a good idea. And then we realized when Fossil was actually able to go to Moncton, which we can't do it at this anymore, moment, but <laughs> but we do have boots on the ground, so that's um a big uh, improvement. Yeah, it is a big improvement, but we were amazed at how quickly uh, we were able to rent out units that we thought were empty um, yeah. because of the property, but they weren't empty because of the property. No, that's it. And property management, you have to manage your property manager. So sorry, property managers out there, but you need to be watched very, <laughs> sure very carefully. Ones, though. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's some great ones, but it's like any employee or anything else you need whatever I, I i heard this saying whatever you inspect you respect so if you don't pay attention and you don't go and check on things mm -hmm. people don't respect it and that's what happens so at a distance they're like aha there's covid and they're stuck they can't get into new brunswick from ontario well sorry but we do have eyes and people there <laughs> that can watch so well, you just I think that when you want it, you just find a way. So we always just find a way to make it work. Yeah. And we were amazed at how quickly we were able to fill all of our vacancies, like within days. Of, yeah. Um, all getting... virtually. So video tours, those mm -hmm. are amazing. Um, yeah, just video tours and posting Facebook Marketplace, Kijiji. Um, Zumper is actually quite good out there too. Uh, and just getting the right price and... Yeah, different strategies, positioning your property, looking at what tenants are looking for. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the right price as well. So you yeah, don't want to charge so, too much or too little. But. No, but we were actually able to fill all the vacancies and actually for more money than what they, the original property management told us that we could get. Yeah. And I think that it's so important if people are um, doing distance uh, real estate investing to really... Um, I mean, you don't all have to go out and, and create your own property management company unless you are crazy like us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but really do your homework and do your research and make sure that they are accountable and that uh, you uh, check their references. I don't just check three. I check, I'm like... 72, <laughs> yeah. yes. So the next one is if, if no, we get property management. I'm not that bad. We didn't ask for 72 references, but we did. We do now ask for more than three because I think that three is just a little bit too easy yeah. to like give your three best buddies or your three best clients and then the life is all good. But So I think that you have to be in these days a little bit more tough. Five, seven, yeah, okay. and call them and, and really have a chat. And, and let's say the person gives you their references. Don't call them right away. Let it sit. And then you kind of surprise the the person. <laughs> hey, did you know? Do you, what do you think about this company? And and it's very telling. So some people will be quite honest. Oh yeah, they're good. But here are some things to watch out for. So that's really good. At our property management too. We want to do things differently. So uh, we're not like taking on a million clients. We're going to be very selective. It does go both ways. So uh, there are some properties that we may not want to manage. So. Well, and I also think that, um, and, and I understand that the more that, that you manage, the more money you make. But I think that sometimes property management companies end up managing too many properties and then they're not able to give the good service. No. So I think that that's something that's really important and that's something that, that speaks to us. A lot of times property management companies will say, we're going to manage your company like it's, a, like, your yeah, property right. like it's our own. <laughs> and I kind of get that. But I mean, I really want it to be managed like it was being managed by myself. <laughs> Yeah. So I think that's something that's really, really important and um, 
not that I, I feel like property managements are, are all bad. Like I said, I'm sh we're really sure that there are good ones. We just haven't been able to um, find them. And, I, and we just felt that the best um, solution for us was to create our own property management company and it's going sw swimmingly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And using systems. So technology, yeah. I mean, we're in 2021. There's tons that can be done remotely. We use Building Stack, so a really cool app, uh, Canadian. And you get all your tenants set up in there. There's a portal. They make their payments. If there's any complaints, any um, anything going on, they can file like little uh, tickets and ask, okay, the plumbing, this, and send videos. Everything gets tracked. It's really cool. And yeah, you know, they can even pay their rent by credit card on the the app. And they actually get coupons for HelloFresh and all of those fun things. Yes, exactly. So there's <laughs> perks built in. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. And the whole history so they can see all their, um, uh, sorry, their uh, when it's paid. So any, um, their rent receipts, that's the word I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. So rent receipts, they don't have to bug you. It's all there. Their lease, they get reminders. Uh, when it's rent day, they get reminders a few days ahead. So mm -hmm. you get rent on time, which is amazing. Or even before time, that's before the date that's been happening to us uh, one or two days before people are sending in their money. They just want to make sure everything's good, uh, which is, yeah, it's just great. Yeah. And that's actually one thing that we actually talked about in our series when we did the, we haven't done a series in a while, but we no. did do an OPM series uh, where you did talk a little bit about an automation. And that's yes. something that, that when you're managing a lot, uh, you have to be able to automate certain things that um, you don't need to be doing by yourself anything that's very repetitive so you're constantly doing the same thing then look for automation mm -hmm. that's that's the trick if you do it once like a one-off it's not worth it but if yeah if it's repetitive like i'm repeating right now so <laughs> i need my robot to repeat <laughs> <laughs> that's true and uh, how about getting a virtual assistant so i have a virtual assistant mm -hmm. and she does make some phone calls sometimes reminders as she shopped around for lawn mowing services for our property management company. So it was great. I'm like, okay, we're going to get some quotes. She's going to call people and get me the quotes. And then I do the final uh, approvals. Yeah, and tenant calls and all kinds of things like that. So that's also a great way to help us manage the property management. And that makes me think about, we just got this new property today. Yeah, so so we we'll have to give her the list. We just closed on a sixplex today yes. with, Salud. Our, with our great partner. I don't know if he wants to be named or not. So we'll leave him to be anonymous, <laughs> anonymous for the time being. Yes. But we're very excited. And unfortunately, we're celebrating by ourselves. But we would have loved to have celebrated with our partners. So another sixplex um, for us. Uh, so that's very exciting. And I think that it's going to be a great opportunity, especially since we're going to be self-managing it from, yeah. right from the get-go. Cause that's something that we really had, um, a big challenge with in 2020 was not having the, the full control over the, the properties. So this will be great that we have it right from the get-go. Yeah, no, exactly. And yeah, we'll get our uh, virtual assistant to call people tomorrow. We have all their phone numbers and I wasn't tempted. I'm like, Oh, I don't want to call those people. So <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, nothing against them. It's just I I hate repeating the same thing six times in a row. So mm -hmm. she's going to call and hello and here's the welcome letter and may I have your email address and and then we'll get them set up in uh, building stack mm -hmm. and automate all of it. So it's awesome. And building stack, anyone interested? Um, if you're a member of the right club, which is free, <laughs> uh, you get 50% uh, off. So it's really good. Yeah, I was actually surprised that it was yeah. such a great discount for the right club members. I was like, woohoo. <laughs> yeah, it's worth it. I'm like, and it's a free membership. This is crazy. But... Yeah, and it's not even an, an expensive application. Like, uh, no. App. An app. app. Yeah, app. application. Yeah. I don't know. It sounds weird in, in English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it does t tons. Like, you can have um, digital sign signatures, so your lease can be in there and that's extra, but there's all kinds of documents you can automate and which is great. Again, automation, how to kind of duplicate what you do and expand. That way you can spend time doing things that you enjoy. So I look Enjoy. forward to that. Yes, like <laughs> drinking wine. Yay. Yay. And I was uh, on a podcast interview yesterday with someone and you didn't hear it. But no. anyway, the person was saying that uh, she was saying that Real estate should be very boring. If it's exciting, there's a problem. Oh, yes. Then we have lots of problems. <laughs> yeah. So that's it. I'm like, oh, okay. She's been doing it 13 years. And she said, it's very boring. The money comes in. 
never hears anything once in a while there's a new tenant so mm -hmm. that sounds amazing <laughs> that's the future but to do that it takes systems and that's what she was talking about so i'm sure you didn't ask her though was it boring at the beginning because no. it probably wasn't so she had to build those systems over years so that it got to be boring exactly <laughs> yeah <she laughs> which is what it. we're working on so 2021 uh for us another thing that we're doing other than the new property management company and for also doing his coaching is we're really working on building systems simplifying things simplifying life really because yeah um i think that if you're you're not having like it's been tough with COVID and everything for everybody being in lockdown for I don't even know how many days. Now. Yeah, <laughs> and even buying real estate has been like a whole new ball game uh, since COVID. Uh, depending on what your market, well, where your market is, well, they've all changed, but um, they've all changed differently depending on your market. Um, so I think that it'll be nice for us to have sim sy symptoms. I can't even systems. <laughs> <laughs> systems in place, yes, yes to keep yeah. going and growing and simplifying and also divesting. So that's something else. We sold one of our properties. We don't like selling, but this one, it was it was her time. Yes. <laughs> and it's on, a, it's on First Avenue. And it was our first. It was our first. <laughs> and our daughter's like, you can't sell your first. I'm like, yes, watch me, we're selling it. <laughs> yes, but I think that, it, that this year is actually a good year to divest in the sense that if you have a property that maybe you've already refinanced like this, property was our first little duplex and it yeah. was great and it cash flowed at the beginning just a little bit and then we refinanced and refinanced again and then well, obviously the juice is gone yeah <laughs> there's not much left so then the when the the tenants call you with a, a b problem yeah or a toilet which problem, we just had <laughs> yes then you have nothing left on the plate at the end of the month so that was just a smart move for us we Put it on the market it sold within days, two days i think and yeah. it sold for over asking so if you guys are, if any investors are thinking of divesting i think that this is a great time to do it now yeah and the the now, tax right now yeah <laughs> rfn <laughs> so yeah do it now but great fun now yes <laughs> um but yeah now is a great time and even for capital gains and stuff so laws haven't changed too much so it's still a good time. Things I, I fear in the future may change. So, and it, there's some planning to go around it too. So for us, it's good. I'm job free this year. So it's a good time for capital gains. Uh, and then if you have a corporation, different setups, uh, speak to your accountant, but there's different ways to mitigate or reduce some of the capital gains and take advantage of the hot market and yeah, and you sell. even reduce capital gains while still investing your money. Yeah, that's crazy. If you want to know about that, uh, email go me. to the ticker. <laughs> yeah, francois.lantier at live.ca. And yeah, we can chat about this. I'm not an accountant, nor is Jennifer, no. but we just speak about our experience. And of course, if you're tuning in from different provinces or even states, uh, laws are very different. So make sure to, to be informed and do your due diligence, which is huge. That's what we've been doing when buying properties. And it's been it's been a challenge at a distance, but it is doable with the right team. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And I think that if you're starting out anyway, I think you should really start in your own uh, backyard. Yeah. Just trying out different things. Start in your small area. too. Yeah. A lot of people are like, oh, I'm going to go wild and buy crazy big things. You can go ahead, but I think it's it's nice to have at least one smaller property and then you you get used to it. Okay, this is how you do tenant management. I want nothing to do with it. So I'm going to hire <laughs> and here's what I'm looking for. So I know this person needs to do this, this, this and this. So it's that experience and that's why we think you should start smaller and then grow. You can scale quickly like our next our next deal like we're we're shocked now we can probably finally get to a uh, 18 doors 20 yeah. doors at once so we're, we're getting there finally uh, it's taken a few years but we're comfortable the comfort mm -hmm. level we just did our our first commercial loan so it's a whole different strategy and what did you learn about commercial lending jennifer it's a lot of work so make sure it's worth the doors yeah that's it we're <laughs> like oh that's it that we're only getting six doors forget it next time buying smaller or much yes. bigger well the gap between like the residential like the work and the and the uh, cost of residential compared compared to commercial, I think is much higher. So if you're going to go from residential to commercial lending, I think that you have to at least 
like we said, 10 to 12 doors to make yeah. it worth your while. Yeah, it was six, six, eight, ten. But it was probably a great learning Yeah, experience. it was. And we got it at an awesome price because we put in an offer in January and we just closed now. So that it's gone mm -hmm. up probably at least 100K, I would say. So it came in with built-in equity. That's something huge. So whenever you buy, it should have some built-in mm -hmm. equity. That yeah. way, even if you lose a little bit of money, you have that equity. So it's not so bad because the first six months, they're a wash. I mean, just the legal costs and uh, property taxes usually you end up paying the full year all at once. Um, there's and different things. Turnover. Yeah, they don't like it when there's a new landlord. And so it's normal. You have to plan for it and just make sure to have good contingency funds and buy at the right price. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Always. So, yes. Even <laughs> in these hot markets, like we're still uh, managing to find deals in the hot markets and there's lots of strategies and ways to do it. You just have to make sure you're doing it. Don't buy anything. <laughs> Be patient. Patience is a virtue. And we learned it in 2020 and 2021 with all the lockdowns. You become patient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and sometimes or I not. Think, well, I think that the biggest thing that I learned in the last year is that sometimes you just have to let a deal go. Yes, yeah, letting go. <laughs> yeah, no, like this sometimes is. Sometimes you have to really work towards it. Like we we almost let this one go. We, yeah, a few times. And the one before that, we closed a few weeks ago. I wanted to let it go, and That's Jennifer's right. like, "No," and, and I that said, was "Let a it good go." One. Yeah, it was really good. I think it was one of our better ones. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to let it go. And again, we got it at a good time. So things under were locked asking. under asking. Things were locked down. People weren't touring, visiting. People were scared. We're like, perfect. That's that's the time to pounce. <laughs> <laughs> but again, at the right price, right building. And again, do your due right diligence. Location. Yeah, location is huge. So I think that's one of the big selling features of that place that we got a few weeks ago, a that location. Yeah. yeah, really good location. And um, a cool mix of apartments. So like some two-story units. Lofts, yeah. really cute and trendy, like loft units, which are really nice. And they rent really well for a really good, like a good rent, like not yeah. too high, but just a good rent. And I think that um, that if we, we would have lost it, it would have been a big loss. Yeah, that one would have been, yeah. And it was cute with the porch swings and mm -hmm. the huge veranda. And everybody has a private deck in the in the back. And yeah, it's a nice, I would live there. Yeah, it is. It's a nice place. Well, yeah. I think most of our buildings, we would be able to live there. Yeah. But I think that uh, it's, yeah, it's so, so key to get, up. you have to make money on the buy. And I know that a lot of people think that it doesn't happen anymore, but sometimes like we've lost out on deals. Like even in Ottawa, we saw this, it was like a crappy little duplex or triplex at 684, just across the street from our duplex. We're like, this oh, is way yes. too much money. This is ridiculous. And but it's what old. we didn't notice is that it actually had an empty lot in the deal. Mm -hmm. And we would have made money on the buy. Yeah, two, uh, three hundred thousand on well, the buy. A lot buy. of people passed that one up, and I, I bet you it went for under asking because yeah. of that. So you have to look for those things, like those details. But it, it seems so small. But there's like twenty five feet in between the houses. So and then we saw a sign, lot for sale. Oh my, <laughs> we missed out. <laughs> yes. But I mean, uh, you can't get them all, and your financing yeah. has to be in order. We weren't ready. No, then, we, would have like, had a good, we would have had to have a good JV partner or a money partner to go in on the deal. But I just or private money. Yeah, well, which, money partner. My, oh yeah, money partner, but for the full amount. Oh yeah, yeah. You could have. We could have done private money for the full amount. And now we're better informed with private money. So mm -hmm. I invite everybody listening. Uh, make do your due diligence. Find out more. Like there's all kinds of of uh, mix. So mortgage investment corporations. There's mm -hmm. different. Uh, agencies that do private lending and there's private individuals that those are the best but if like let's say it's a million dollars it's rare that you'll find the one person that can plunk down a million dollars <laughs> for a few months usually yes, call me. yeah, yeah <laughs> give us a call right now <laughs> we're gonna be buddies no but i think that that's something that we learned a lot about was private money opm other people's money because i even thought like before that this was almost like a mafia thing you know yeah people, illegal yeah illegal mafia thing only people, banks are allowed to land people and plunking down these huge 
chunks of cash on properties to kind of like launder their money or I don't know. Yeah. But, and they do ask you when you like, where's the money coming from? Mm. Yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that, you know, a lot of times, like well, all, all the investors that we work with, I find are just like everyday people. They're just yeah. people that are investing. They don't want to do the stock market thing. They don't want to do the, our, well, they can do the RRSP thing in it. But anyway, that's a whole nother story that we've talked about. So if you want to know more about that, go look, look at our series. Yeah, on Instagram. And OPM. But um, they're just everyday people that are just investing with people that have experience in real estate and that they know they're going to get a good return on their money. And yeah. We're not allowed to say that we can guarantee returns. It's not but. guaranteed, but it's a fixed rate. So if it's like a percentage, well, we have to pay you. So it's not guaranteed. There's yeah. risk like in anything, but it's a, yeah, it's a good way of investing and it's relationships. Yeah. That's, well, that's just what I was going to say that it's relationships that you're building with people that are investing with you for their future or dream or whatever it is. And we're building our future or dream or whatever it it's is. It's win-win. With them. <laughs> yeah. And it's great. I mean, and some of them become investment partners even they could be money partners and that's it. That's fine. Or some of them want to become mm -hmm. more active. Um, there's so many reasons. So mm -hmm. it's really great. And, and you're helping people, you're helping yourself and you're helping them. So yeah, which like is great. It. but again, do your due diligence, do vet your partners. Don't borrow from just anyone. Yeah. Uh, make sure you know them and find out more about what they do and what they're looking for. And, and it's, it's important to have that relationship and legally as well. In Canada, you're supposed to borrow from friends and family unless they're uh, accredited investors. So become friends <laughs> and then you can borrow or uh, there's different things you can do. But again, yeah, but be we've careful. We've really got to, to know some great people through uh, real, real estate investing. Yeah, and we've learned about some great wines. Yes, actually, we didn't... Uh, I used to get headaches from white wine and our well, one of our couple investors uh, sent us this amazing bottle of white wine. Italian, Suave. Uh, suave Classico. Mm. Amazing. I wish I could like have a case of that. <laughs> but isn't it like 40 bucks a bottle too? So yeah, it's so a it's nicer wine. It's, and it's not... actually out of stock at LCBO right now, but wow. it is just such a nice... Um, like it, they said it was a really good one and I would know, I would believe them because they have good taste. They work with us. And, um, yeah. oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it really was, um, an amazing bottle of white wine and I did not get a headache from it. No. And I don't usually like white, but it didn't have that bitter, like it kind Chardonnay. It reminded me of a red. It was yeah. weird, but really good. Kind of like a Javut Straminer, so like a pinky rose. But not as sweet. No, yeah, without the sweetness. So that was, yeah, an amazing discovery. Thank you uh, to our partners. <laughs> yes. That was great. Yes, it's a shame that we couldn't have opened it with them. But after I know. COVID, we're going we're gonna to be like alcoholics opening bottles of wine with all the people that we didn't get to open bottles of wine. <laughs> yeah, we've been opening a lot of bottles. You should see our bin when I, I have this bin <laughs> in the garage that I bring with all the bottles for the consignment. And usually it was once every few months. Now it's like once a month, I'm starting to feel bad. <laughs> well, this is not Pepsi in real estate. This is wine in real estate. <laughs> exactly, wine in real estate. So that's it. Speak to your accountant. Maybe you can off, like, uh, write off some wine for... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> yes. So that's kind of it. We just wanted to update you on what we're doing and talk mm -hmm. about this amazing wine, the Suave Classico from Italy. Yeah. White wine, give it a try. Um, even if you don't like white wine, I usually despise white wine. Yeah. I don't like it at all, but it was really good. Yeah, we really wanted to, I don't know why I thought like this is going to be good. Kind of like that fourplex. We're like, this is going to be good, even though we're not sure. <laughs> and it was, yes. So try things, don't be afraid and... What's the worst that can happen? So with wine, I mean, worst case, well, you don't, you don't like, like it. it. Uh, building, real estate is actually fairly forgiving. I mean, you have to be careful, but usually worst case, if you bought something wrong, you keep it longer, so. Yeah, well, I just think that you always have to think about um, several plans in mind when you're buying um, a exit property. Exit strategies. Yeah, so. you have to think of your exit strategy. That's so important. I mean, even with that fourplex, we're like, okay, we could do Airbnb, we could rent it out. We could probably just fix it up a bit and sell it quickly. Yeah. I mean, there was lots of options 
with that fourplex that I thought, okay, this could be easily just like with the sixplex. I mean, our, even our real estate agents said you could do a, a furnished rental and make money because the it's close location. to a hospital, like it's a great location. University. So, yeah, so I think that uh, you just have, have to always keep in mind um, that that you're probably not always just going to do plan A for all of your deals. So I think that having a plan A, B, C, and D is very is, important. Yeah, very important. And you have to be working with investors that have several plans because yes. things go south. <laughs> yeah, like this closing today was something else, like some running after banks and bank drafts and and lawyers but and they're all like time that. zones so to... too, time zones. That, oh, that yes. was kind of a newer one, like dealing with two different time zones and so something to consider when you're doing long distance investing, don't forget, even an hour can complicate things. So yeah, that's so true. Yeah. But anyway, if you guys have questions about property management, real estate coaching, if you're thinking about um, if you're investing in real estate, or even if you have questions about investing in real estate, Francois is probably talking to people all day long about it. Yeah, I'm plugged in all day and the kids <laughs> tease me. You're on a call again. Yes, again. <laughs> it's great. So uh, give us a shout out if you have any questions. I mean, we're always here to help other people that are um, thinking about investing or thinking about investing with us or with anybody else. It doesn't matter. Just um, yeah, we love to help. And that's how we've grown. We've been helped by a lot of great mentors. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we, we'd like to be mentors. Uh, the coaching isn't free, but I don't mind doing like a free discovery call or just talking about um, what you do. And yeah, absolutely. You make, make some new friends and, and that's it. And some people bribe me with Starbucks or wine. So I don't say no. <laughs> <laughs> He's bought off so cheaply. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's bad. <laughs> so that's it until the next time. Yes, chin chin. Cheers, santé, kampai. <laughs> Bye.